Hello, Mark Soper. Hello, Miriam. How are you? Very good and great to be with you this morning and good to be able to chat to things that we really care about a lot. Mm. I reckon after COVID, God did something that was good. Mm. And I think he told us, don't go backwards mm. to what we know. Let's go forward to what he's got for us. And this idea of having new ways of doing church, mm. whether that be a gathered worshipping community, then communities of hope, where we go and find communities that really need some great hope. Mm. And then community tables, where we just sit around tables and talk to people about life and faith and, and mission. Now, yep. a lot's taken place in your space. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about how that's been for you. Yeah, well, we have six locations and there's no half-strength lattes, as someone would say. So we have Helensburg with Lauren Martin there. We have Panania, Menai, Miranda, Sutherland and Engadine. But we have one Sunday gathering, uh, gather worship in community, and that's at Shire Salvers Menai. And then we have a whole heap of community hopes in Kingdom of Tables across the whole area. Um, probably the biggest significance that we've had over the last little while is using the Salvo stores um, missionally and having you know, faith conversations, faith, faith gatherings in Salvo stores. We've now just employed a community engagement worker um, in every Salvo store, a mission leader, as we would call them, someone of faith, but can actually help the needs of those that are coming to the, to the store, but also link people to faith and our community services. Quite incredible, isn't it? The growth mm. that's happened and all that God's done mm. right from the beginning until now. That has to take a great team. The key part of that is relationship, relationship, relationship. Things only go at the speed of trust and relationship. And so we've tried to work really hard at that. The other thing is we don't compete with each other. Um, we are, there's only one enemy and um, we, we want each other to win. We champion each other and we cheer each other on. And there's probably uh, probably three sort of questions or a, a bit of a, a stock that we do with our, all our team. And the three ones is we want people to know what they're good at. So we get them to say, what are you championing? What do you think you're doing well at? And then they share that. And then also the other thing is, what do you think is a growth area, something, an area for you to improve? And then there's a real encouragement of that. And the third thing is from a line management point of view, we want staff to speak into our leadership. And so if I was line managing you, Miriam, I would say, is there anything that I could do um, better for you to help you lead better? And then often, sometimes I'll give you feedback. And you have to be a secure leader for that, but it's really important because we want to have this two-way conversation and we want to champion people to be better and improve for the benefit of the kingdom. I love that. There's uh, some real coaching, some real giving back, mm. honesty, vulnerability, mm. authenticity. People start to grow, don't they, as yeah. they do that. I think the other thing I observe is that you do collaboration really, really well. So tell me about that. Uh, I believe unity commands a blessing. It's one of our, our values and we've worked really hard at that. It's not easy. It's probably the hardest space, to be honest, but it's bearing the most fruit. Um, so we, we partner with a number of churches and we align ourselves with people who probably share our values. Um, we have churches that use our facility. Um, we partner with other churches doing mission and service in the community. We're really learning just to bless and not take all the time. And, and that's something we're working at. And also just think kingdom. I think if we can think bigger, we'll, we'll definitely benefit a lot more. Real kingdom stuff, isn't it? Really, really good. I love that. There must be a big budget to keep all of this going. <laughs> so how do you do that? Because your aim is always to be sustainable. Tell us a little bit about the money side of it. Yeah, so Shire Salvos is sustainable over six locations. And we do that from a variety of, uh, of ways. But the first is probably from base, from our gather worship community, that um, through tithes and offerings, that's our biggest income um, in the Shire. Um, and that funds our gather worship community. And then obviously, we rent out all our spaces. So I think one of the greatest assets of the Salvation Army is untapped resources, which sometimes is our building. So we rent out all our spaces, which is a very significant chunk of our budget. And the other part is Red Shield. We spend a lot of time and, and effort on Red Shield. And I think this year we raised about $150,000. Amazing. And it's been a great opportunity for us to raise revenue. And we just have to really be bold enough and dream big enough. So I've got a page of dreams and I think, well, how am I gonna resource this? And not always asking the army for that because I believe that, that God is the ultimate provider. And just recently I had a, a guy asked to catch up with me and he gave a donation for $50,000, which I'm working him with now, how he would like that sort of spent and what areas we could do that. So, um, so be a good steward and then, but also step out in faith and, and ask for God to provide. 
love the faith in that. So you believe in God for big stuff, you've got a big vision mm. and he comes through, doesn't he? Mm. Which is just wonderful. So what's next? I've got a list of opportunities about serving the least and the lonely and the broken in our area. And, and I write them down and the other, oh, probably about four months ago, I just was like, okay, Lord, which is the one that you want us to focus on next? And I felt like it was Heathcote. And so I've been journeying with the locals and the MP and there's a huge homeless issue out there. And we're hoping that we will be able to sign a lease on a property um, and start a community of hope at Heathcote, which I think will be fantastic. I'm really excited for what that to look like, yeah. We'll believe that for you. We'll yeah, pray yeah, that money in yeah, and yeah. I'm sure that'll become a reality. A lot of people just beginning the journey. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to them? Because that takes time, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Takes time to shape the team. What would you say if you were just beginning the journey? Mm -hmm. Hang out with like-minded kingdom people because yes. it rubs off. Yep. The other thing is you don't have to go fast. I've learned that. I actually just need to walk in the right direction. Yeah. And if Jesus isn't in it, I don't really want to be a part of it. That's really wise advice. We want to take that advice. We want to learn from you, Mark. We want to learn from your team. This journey is not going away. It's a good journey. Mm. And we want all across the Territory to start hearing these stories. People have got permission. Let's go mm. and let's see what God does in that. So thanks for chatting this morning. Really, really good. Bless you, friend. Yeah, bless you, Mary.